SwiftUI gives us a number of environment properties that describe the user's custom accessibility settings. And it's worth taking the time to read and respect those settings. Back in Project 15, we looked at things like labels and hints, traits, groups, and more to make great accessibility options there. But these settings are different because they're provided through the environment. This means SwiftUI automatically monitors them for changes and will re-invoke our body property whenever one of them changes. For example, one of the options is called differentiate without color, which is helpful for the one in 12 men who have color blindness. When this setting's active, apps should enable the UI to look clear using shapes, icons, and textures rather than just colors. To use this out, we want a new environment property up here. We'll say at environment backslash dot accessibility and then we want differentiate without color it's a long one var paste there we go and that'll be either true or false and you can adapt your ui accordingly for example you could write some code to make a uh, a simple green background for the regular layout but when this differentiate without color is enabled we'll use a black background and add a check mark instead so we'll say down here we have a HDAC. If we are in differentiate without color mode, like this, I'll do an image system name of check mark dot circle and a text of success, like so. We'll add a little bit of padding behind it, like so. And then let's just scroll that a little bit, like that. And for the background, if we're in again, uh, Differential with color mode, then I'll use black, otherwise, I'll use green. We'll add a foreground style of white and a clip shape of dot capsule, like so. Now, let's test it out. I'll press Command R here to build and run that code. Put it over on the left here in the side of my Xcode window, like so. So here we are. Uh, with no special settings enabled. Uh, what you can do is, uh, in the uh, iOS simulator itself, you can just basically go to the settings app here, and you'll find accessibility, boom. And then we want display and text size, and what you want is differentiate without color. So let's check that one here. And we'll get, being well, back in our app, boom. We get black with a check mark. It's much, much clearer on the screen. Another common option is called reduce motion, which again is available right there in our settings window to remove, uh, to reduce options here. Uh, it's under uh, motion, there we go, motion here. And you want reduce motion like this. Uh, and when that's enabled, apps should try to limit the amount of animation it causes movement on the screen. For example, if I enable it now and try and uh, change apps, boom, you see you get a little fade instead of a movement. So you get fades instead everywhere instead of the movement. So the iOS app switcher itself is making views fade in and out rather than scale up and down. Now, with the UI code, really this means you want to restrict the use of with animation as a function when it involves movement. And so we could say, let's say I get rid of this current version here. Let's say we now want accessibility reduce motion like that. Var reduce motion. I'll make a, let's actually make the screen bigger for a start. And the other property here at state private var scale is 1.0 by default. And then inside the main view here, I'm gonna make a button saying hello world. And when this button's pressed, if reduced motion is enabled, I'll do scale star equals 1.5 immediately. Make this thing bigger when it's pressed. Otherwise, I'll do with animation, scale star equals 1.5. So it slides upwards in the scale. Either way, I have a scale effect here of that scale value, like so. Let's press Command R and give it a try over here in the simulator. So right now, I'll just press Hello World. You can see it just jumps up neatly because that setting's enabled right now. But if I relaunch the app, and then go to the settings screen 
and turn off reduce motion. Now things back to sliding around again. We're going to get scaling up moving like that. Now, I don't know about you, but I honestly find this a little bit annoying to use. Fortunately, we can write a little wrapper around Hello Dogs, the with animation function that will use UI kits accessibility data directly, allowing us to bypass animation automatically. So we could make a little function up here. We could say func with optional animation, except some kind of result to work with. Give me the animation like this. We use the fault by default like that. And then the body of our animation code will be here. This is a function that takes no parameters, might throw mistake, uh, errors and uh, or return some kind of result. This whole thing will be rethrows. It can throw us up further if it needs to and returns that result. Now internally, we can say if UI accessibility is reduced motion enabled, that's the internal UI kit reduce motion value. Then we'll do return try calling the animation body straight away. Otherwise, if we're still here, we'll return try calling with animation, that animation and the body we worked with. So it's a way to say, actually, sometimes just make the change, other times animate the change automatically by reading this reduce motion value here. So when it's true, just move the change immediately, like the scale value here, otherwise animated. The whole <laughs> throws, rethrows thing here is more advanced Swift. That's covered in my book, Pro Swift. But this otherwise is a direct copy of the function signature for the with animation call. So two can be used interchangeably. In our case, that means down here when we have our little button code, we can simply say, boom, with optional animation and get the same result. It'll animate sometimes, but not every time. So here again, reduce motion is turned off. It will fade up neatly. But if I go ahead and enable reduce motion, back in the app again, it will just snap up straight away going forward. Now using this approach, you haven't got to repeat your animation code every time. One last option to consider supporting is called reduce transparency. And when it's enabled, apps should reduce the amount of blur and transparency used in their designs to make doubly sure everything's clear. For example, we could use a solid black background when reduce transparency is enabled. Otherwise, we could use 50% transparency. Let's look at the code. We could say here, this one's called accessibility reduce transparency. There we go. I'll do var paste again. And then in our main view code here, I'm going to say text is hello world. Add a bit of padding around it. And then a background color. If we have reduced transparency enabled, I'm going to use black. Otherwise, I'm going to use black with an opacity of oops, crazy, 0 0.5. We'll add a foreground style of white and a clip shape of capsule, like so. Anyway, uh, let's complain slightly. Ah, oh, fine. Color dot black. You can do it. And color dot black. Oh, I see why. I'm being a chimp down here. Sorry. Color black dot opacity, like that. There we go. That's why it's complaining. I'm being an uber chimp. Fine. Um, with that enabled, you can see, hopefully, when I run the code back, we should get a nice sort of grayish background like that. But over in settings, let's turn reduce motion off perhaps. Um, under display and text size here is reduced transparency. And now the light gray, oops, light gray will become a solid black. These features are really, really important. In fact, they're so important, they're actually baked into Xcode down here in this little button, environment override. It's like two little pills like this. This thing gives you quick access to all the important things. You can say, do we have uh, reduced transparency on or off, or reduced motion on or off, or without color on and off, right there inside Xcode. Now, that's the final technique. I want you to learn ahead of building this real project. So just go ahead and press undo a lot of times to get your project back to a nice clean state, and then we can begin the real thing. <laughs> there we go.